Welcome to the March edition of What's in Bloom at the Bancroft Garden. Every month we put together a selection of plants that are in bloom in that particular month and uh, say a little bit about them and uh, we're gonna walk through the garden and have a look at those. So first up on our March list is Anaxanthos amber velvet. So Anaxanthos is an interesting plant from Australia. The leaves look kind of iris-like but the flowers are most unusual. They're uh, fuzzy tubular flowers that flare open at the mouth. And as you can see here, the color of the flowers, the open flowers is uh, reddish and fuzzy on the outside, but an odd uh, sort of a milky blue-green color on the inside. Very, very uh, different, very unusual uh, plant. These are very popular plants for floral arrangements as well as in the garden. Anagazanthos amber velvet. Next up, we have agave dazzleriodes. This name means an agave that looks like a dazzlerion because it doesn't have teeth along the edge of the leaf like most agaves would. Actually, it re really looks more like a yucca than it does like a dazzlerion, but it got named for its ap appearance like a dazzlerion. At any rate, it comes from southern Mexico and it grows on cliffs. And where it grows in habitat, the uh, flower stalk comes out and arches out over the abyss and hangs down. And it's doing that here and it's actually hitting the ground, which wouldn't be a problem in habitat because it would be hundreds of feet down before it got to the ground. But any, anyhow, it starts at the, uh, at the part closest to the rosette of leaves and then the flowers work their way along. And so here, Ours begin here, and these flowers are already gone by. Here are the open flowers here, and there are the buds uh, going on from there. So it's really taken a very long time, much longer than it would have in habitat. And I believe that's because of the cold temperatures in our winter, which are much colder than what it would get in its habitat, and that slowed it down. But anyway, it's flowering right along and looking pretty darn good. Our first time ever for flowering this species at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. Next up, we have a California native plant. Hespero yucca whiplei. Uh, the common name for this plant is Our Lord's Candle because the large plume of flowers coming up reminded somebody of a candle flame. Usually the uh, flowers are white, but in this case there are purple and red tinges, uh, which really makes it especially attractive. Uh, this is a common plant in the southern half of California. Uh, doesn't quite make it up to our area in northern California but it is a really magnificent plant, as you can see uh, with this specimen in flower. So it used to be classified as yucca whiplei, and now it's Hesper yucca whiplei, and it got taken out of yucca because unlike the true yuccas that flower over and over again, uh, this one behaves more like a century plant where it puts all its energy into one giant flower and then dies afterwards. So this is the swan song for this plant, but it's really going out in style. Hesperia yucca whiplei. Australia has a great many plants in the family Proteaceae, the Protea family, and among them are members of the genus Grevillea. This is an unusual one called Grevillea petrophylloides big bird. So it's just starting to flower. There's all these flowering ones coming up all over the place, but just a few flowers that are already open, as you can see here. And uh, so this is a cluster of many little tiny flowers, and uh, they have some uh, pink violets in them and some uh, gray greens and mauves. It's really a, an unusual color combination. And uh, just starting now, but it's really gonna be spectacular with all the flowers that are emerging. Uh, a, a rather recent introduction in horticulture, and uh, we really like it for its uh, fine textured leaves and its very pale stems. So it's really an attractive plant even when it isn't in flower. Grevillea petrophylloides big bird. Besides Australia, the other country that has lots of members of the Protea family is South Africa. And among those are uh, plants in the genus Leucodendron. And uh, they really have very tiny flowers and little tight heads that almost look cone-like. Uh, but these are actually, each one of these heads has many, many teeny tiny flowers. Uh, it isn't the flowers that make a show as much 
as the bract leaves just below the flowers, which in this case are uh, a bright yellow color. Uh, but the combination between the green leaves, the yellow bracts, and the uh, reds and oranges and yellows in the flower head really makes a wonderful display altogether. This is a very small growing leucodendron, leucodendron little bit. We had a look at uh, Grevillea big bird, which is relatively new to horticulture, but this one's been around for a long time. This is Grevillea lavangulacea panola, so panola being the cultivar name. And uh, it's, uh, its name implies that it uh, looks like a lavender, but to me it really looks more like a rosemary. Uh, and it has all these little uh, curly red flowers, uh, which it has a lot of really, they're not in a, uh, in a cylindrical uh, grouping like they are with Big Bird. There are just a few at a time all over the place on the, on the plant. And the gray green of the leaves combined with the red of the flowers really makes it look very festive. Uh, this plant is not very far along in its flowering as yet. Uh, most of these little flowers haven't really extended their little stigma yet, uh, but really has a lot of them and is a very attractive plant even without the flowers. Here we have another South African aloe, Aloe marlothii. Comes from farther north uh, up towards uh, the uh, area around Pretoria, South Africa. And uh, it, instead of having upright racemes of flowers like Aloferox, uh, has oblique angle uh, racemes. The flower color for Marlothii is usually in the yellow to orange range, as you see here. Uh, it is, like Aloferox, a single-stemmed plant that gets very tall eventually. It can get even over 10 feet tall uh, at, a, at an old age. Uh, and it has a lot of prickles on the leaves, as you can see here, and uh, a truly spectacular flower when it blooms in the wintertime, Alo Marlothii. We've seen a couple of tall growing aloes from South Africa, but there are lots that don't make a tall stem, and this is one of them. This is Aloe Brent Dryensis. The ending ensis means coming from, and it comes from a place called Brunt Dry in South Africa. And uh, it has sometimes only a single head, like the plant over here, and sometimes multi-headed, like the plant here. Uh, but in either case, uh, has leaves with a lot of stripiness on them, as well as spotted uh, on the upper surface, and then an uh, inflorescence with lots and lots of branches and little clusters of red flowers, as you can see here. Uh, Aloe branch dryensis isn't very common in cultivation, uh, but we found it really succeeds well here at the Bancroft Garden and puts on a beautiful show in January and February and March uh, every year. Here we have another South African aloe. This one is Aloe speciosa meaning showy, and uh, it's really having a great flower year this year. Uh, the flower stalks are quite short and uh, don't have branches, but there are lots of them. Uh, at the bud stage, uh, the buds are pink, and then as the flowers open, they turn uh, ivory with green stripes, and then the uh, sort of rust orange stamens protrude and add even another color dimension to it. Uh, this plant has been in the garden for decades, but it has more flowers this year than ever before. Um, Aloe speciosa does make a trunk uh, and sometimes remains single-headed, but oftentimes forks to make multi-heads as you see here. Many of the plants we have in cultivation that are referred to as geraniums are really in the genus Pelargonium. It's in the geranium family, but a Pelargonium flower differs from a geranium flower in that it's asymmetrical. So in the case of this one here, you can see there are two upper petals that have um, red markings on them, and then three lower petals that do not have uh, red markings on them. Uh, and uh, so that's a Pelargonium, not a geranium, uh, but still called geraniums in nurseries. Uh, this is one of the lemon-scented geraniums. In other words, if you uh, touch that leaf and smell it, 
It has a wonderful uh, fragrance to it. Also very nice uh, cut leaves that give the uh, leaves a very ornamental effect. And just beginning to flower now, the flowers uh, change color from uh, a, a deeper pink to a paler pink as they go along. And there are many, many of them starting to come on the, on the plant now. Euphorbia is a very, very large genus. Uh, and very, very variable. So we have some common garden weeds that are in the genus Euphorbia. Uh, so is the poinsettia. Uh, many Euphorbias look cactus-like, but other ones are in this unique group called the medusoids. So we call them medusoids because they have a central uh, head and then radiating uh, cylindrical arms that are reminiscent of Medusa with her head of snakes. So this one here is called Euphorbia caput medusae. In other words, Medusa's head. Uh, and most of the time it's got these green branches, but when it comes into bloom, the tip of each branch becomes covered with these little flowering structures that are called cyathea. So each one is a cyathium, and it's like a little cup with a fringe of white glands around the outside and then teeny tiny flowers in the middle. Uh, and that's the structure of a euphorbia flower. Uh, the glands vary greatly from one species to another and really change the appearance of the, uh, of the flowering structure. In this case, they're like white fringe. Uh, Euphorbia caput medusae comes from near Cape Town and uh, does really very well for us here in California. Uh, this plant got damaged in a freeze many years ago and uh, it's, as it regrew, it no longer shows that central head at the middle that it had to begin with. But it certainly is very happy here and just flowering to beat the band right now. Here we have an aloe called Aloe striata, uh, commonly known as the coral aloe, and that name comes from the coral-colored border on the leaf. So most aloes have teeth along the edge of the leaf, but this one instead just has a smooth, continuous uh, border that uh, turns coral-colored. And uh, when it flowers, the flowers are sort of like an umbrella of orange flowers. And you can see that here. Uh, lots of little tiny tubular flowers, but all together making a dome or, or an umbrella. Um, aloe striatas are fairly common uh, aloe in cultivation because it's really easy to grow. Uh, sometimes single-headed and sometimes uh, clustering. Uh, but always a welcome sight in the garden, even when it isn't in flower, and like icing on the cake when all these orange flowers are present. Here we have a plant called Bulbinella nutans. It's in the same family as the aloes, but with a very different look, uh, almost grassy leaves that are uh, somewhat succulent, and uh, these beautiful clusters of yellow flowers. Uh, a bulbinella is actually a bulb, and this is dormant all summer long and uh, not even visible at all. Then in the fall with the rains, the leaves come out, and then this time of the year in uh, about uh, March, uh, late February and March, uh, we get these beautiful clusters of bright yellow flowers. Uh, then in the uh, springtime, it'll start to die back and then go into dormancy all summer long. Bulbinella nutans. The genus Sedum is a very large group uh, which occurs in uh, Europe and Asia and North America. And uh, probably Mexico has some of the most succulent, most interesting of all the sedums, including this one, Sedum pachyphyllum. Uh, pachyphyllum means thick leaf and certainly has thick leaves as do many plants in this family. Uh, and sedum pachyphyllum is one of the parents of the more commonly grown pork and bean sedum, sedum rubratinctum. Uh, so this and sedum stallii are the two parents of that. Uh, it has these very delightfully chubby leaves with uh, sort of a blue-green color and then uh, red or purplish tinge at the tips, and then these clusters of bright yellow star-like flowers. Uh, so it's just beginning. A lot of these uh, clusters don't have open flowers yet, but you can see how bright and yellow the flowers are when they open up. Sedum pachyphyllum. Okay, here we have a shrub in the hibiscus family, uh, Malvaceae. It's known as the blue hibiscus, uh, although it's in its own genus, Aleogeny, uh, an Australian genus. 
Uh, but you can see how hibiscus-like the flowers are. Uh, it's called the blue hibiscus, but it's really more lavender and purple than blue. Uh, but a spectacular flower, large showy flower, uh, with the hibiscus look to it, and uh, flowers all summer long. So it's just getting going now. Uh, the leaves are divided and crinkled and quite interesting in themselves, uh, but it really has a very long flowering season, an upright growth habit, and a spectacular plant for the garden. Aleogeny hugelii, the cultivar Santa Cruz. The stone crop family is a, a large family occurring around the world uh, and the name stone crop because many of them grow on rocks in places where there's not much soil and other plants can't compete with them. Uh, from Mexico, one of the large genera in the family is Echeveria, and we've long had many Echeverias in this garden, but this is a relatively new one for us, just went in last year. Uh, it's a hybrid called Echeveria laulinza. Its parents are Echeveria laueii and Echeveria lindsayana, or, which is a form of Echeveria colorata. Uh, and both of those have been around for a long time, but this hybrid is really wonderful because it just blooms and blooms and blooms. Uh, it's been sending up one flower stalk after another for several months now and no sign of ending. Uh, we like the pale color of the leaves. We like the orange color of the flowers with their nodding tips. And it's really been a stellar performer for us, Echeveria laulinza. We have a lot of things uh, from the asphodel uh, family on the uh, list this month, uh, all the aloes, and we have the Bulbinella nutans. And here is yet another genus in the asphodel family, Bulbine. Uh, the flowers are yellow and kind of reminiscent of the Bulbinella, but it has a unique feature, and that is the stamens have little feathery hairs on them, uh, and that feature is unique to Bulbine. Uh, unlike the Bulbinella, uh, most Bulbines are evergreen and don't go deciduous, and uh, y yellow is the usual flower color, as you see here, uh, and this is a species we do not have a name on. Uh, the the uh, plant was grown from seed collected in the Tankwa Karoo, a dry area of South Africa's interior. And uh, it really seems to like it here. It's sending up lots of flower stalks. Uh, and hopefully someday we'll get a name on it. But meanwhile, we'll just have to call it Bulbine Species from the Tankwa Karoo. Next up is another aloe from South Africa. This one is aloe van Balenii from Eastern South Africa. And where it grows in nature, it's dry all winter long and the plants turn a wonderful red color. Here in California, it doesn't uh, do that, but it is a, uh, a dramatic large rosette with of sort of octopus-like leaves. And then these beautiful spires of flowers. And the flower color does range from yellow to orange to uh, sort of a, uh, a caramel color. Uh, ours is more on the yellow side, but uh, really an astounding number of flowers from one clump of leaves, uh, aloe van Balenii. March is a, a great month for aloes from South Africa, and here we have another one, aloe maculata, the yellow form. So aloe maculata has a big distribution and the flowers could be orange or they could be coral or they could be yellow. And here we have the yellow form. Uh, the flowers are yellow and tubular in a uh, tight head-like cluster. And uh, the yellow form blooms earlier in uh, starting in late February, whereas the other forms bloom later on. Uh, it is a clustering plant and it's formed quite a lot of heads over time. Uh, it's uh, an easy plant to grow and uh, a really spectacular plant at this time of the year when all the flowers are coming out. Aloe maculata, the yellow form. Australia is home to many species of acacia and some of them are quite familiar in our California landscape, but this one is an oddball. In fact, most people on seeing it, don't even think it's an acacia. It has very uh, rough textured leaves and these uh, finger-like spires of tiny yellow flowers uh, just in full bloom right now. Uh, it's one you don't see often in cultivation. Uh, acacia denticulosa from Western Australia. That brings us to the close of this month's What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. But remember, there are many, many plants that are not on our What's in Bloom list, 
because they don't last all month long. And a good example is this wonderful little cactus from Argentina here. This is Echinopsis randallii, or Trichocereus randallii, and it has never bloomed this early in the year before. Uh, so we're quite surprised to see this flower. It'll only last a couple of days, but really wonderful to see. So you really have to come to the garden yourself to catch all these wonderful things that happen. Every day brings some surprise or another.